Hello, hi there, hi everybody. Um, today I want to talk about a pretty interesting topic um, because it comes up every now and then with my mentees and also I see the topic quite prominent on some of the uh, Q&As out there. So the topic is the initial hypothesis when structuring a case because a lot of people out there um, are telling you that you should start the structuring of a case with formulating um, a hypothesis on the overall question. So what this means is that you should in essence formulate an answer to whatever the question is and then build your structure around either verifying this answer or falsifying this answer. Well, this notion has developed an enormous amount of yeah, self-dynamic over the last 10 or 15 years um, since it was essentially pushed into the brains of people by the first case guru out there. And I think you all know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but, well, as a matter of fact, um, this has caused a lot of damage with candidates who have been interviewing with the big uh, strategy consulting firms. Right? Um, because the problem is that the candidates have treated this as a rule. right? Because most people, especially when they uh, are fresh from university, have been taught that just replicating something uh, like it is a rule leads them to success. Um, but here we have a very problematic rule. <laughs> because um, the problem is that the formulation of a concrete hypothesis at the very start of a case is utter nonsense. Right? So, um, in fact, stating a hypothesis for the overall problem only makes sense in one very, very specific situation. And that is, if you really have something to ground your hypothesis on. And that means if you have extremely concrete and uh, um, yeah, really, really detailed information at the start of the case. But this is essentially never the case in an MBB interview because on purpose the case prompts are usually quite vague because this is part of what they're testing, right? Whether the candidate is able to identify what he needs to find out in order to get a grip on the problem. So um, this means that stating a hypothesis at the very start just for the sake of it serves absolutely no purpose. It is nothing but a shot from the hip, right? It is pure speculation and guesswork. And guesswork is something that you should avoid at all cost when you are interviewing with uh, McKinsey or BCG or Bain, right? So um, maybe let's look at a concrete example. Um, one of the most classical uh, questions in such interviews is a situation where a client is facing declining profits, right? And he wants to find out what's going on and uh, what they can do to essentially reverse this negative development. If you now start to structure this case and you state something like, well, my hypothesis is that uh, the profits have declined because uh, uh, the customer demand has reduced. This would be just completely mental, right? It is like analytical suicide, I'm honest, right? This is, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, it is literally the opposite. It is the antithesis of what you want to show in an MBB interview. And that is rigorous, and laser-sharp thinking. Well, stating an initial hypothesis for the overall problem is nothing but speculation. And uh, believe me, clients can speculate on their own. They don't need to pay $6,000 a day for a McKinsey consultant to join them in the speculation. right? Um, but most folks out there, they will then come up with such nonsense as well, my hypothesis is that the customer demand has decreased 
Um, and in order to analyze this, I want to look into uh, three or four areas, right? Uh, the customers and the market and the product, etc. Right? You all know these so-called <laughs> structures, right? Um, but let me tell you one thing. This is not even a structure. This is not a structure. This is just a topic list, right? But it is not helpful at all, right? Um, Structuring a case does not mean to tell the interviewer all the things that you want to look at. This is not a structure. St a structure for a case only serves one purpose. And this is something that the candidates don't understand. And by the way, it's not their fault, right? It is the fault of these very popular but abysmally bad case preparation books that have been uh, published like 10 15 years ago and that have sold probably hundreds of thousands of copies over the last 10 years anyway <laughs> what most candidates don't understand is that the purpose of structuring is not to tell the interviewer what you want to look at but the sole purpose of structuring is to clearly explain to the interviewer how you're going to arrive at an answer to the client's question. So, a structure is a logic. It is the logic according to which you will answer the question. And this is something completely different from saying, I'm going to look at four areas, right? Or six areas, or 18 areas. Doesn't matter, <laughs> right? Um, because for a client, and the interviewer will always assume the way you behave in an interview is also how you would behave with a client. And for a client, it's completely irrelevant what you want to look at. If I am the client, I don't care what you want to look at, right? I mean, you can look at whatever you want. I don't care. You can look at the wall, right? But tell me how you're going to answer my question. So this is what you need to show in a structure. So um, um, essentially, what you have to do is to show the ability to cut through an issue starting from the question and really cutting through it in a top-down way. So essentially, um, what we could do here in the above example, right? Uh, uh, um, uh, what we could essentially say is, um, well, our client has asked us two clear questions here. Firstly, they want to know why their profits are going southward. And secondly, they want to know how they should react to this in order to reverse the trend. Right? Um, so in order to address this, we can tackle this accordingly in two overarching steps. First, we do a diagnostic and the outcome of the diagnostic will be a clear understanding of what has happened that has caused profits to go down and why has this happened. Based on this understanding of the what and of the why, we can then formulate specific measures that will take up the reasons that we identified in the diagnostic and uh, uh, that will then essentially either eliminate these reasons or alleviate their consequences. So, the diagnostic in turn can be done in two sub-steps. You first start with a numerical analysis, right? So you take the focus metric, that is profit, as we know, and we disaggregate it into its components by means of a logic tree, of a driver tree. And then we are comparing the current value of each uh, sub-element. So on the first layer, this might be um, uh, revenue and costs, right? Or it might be the segments, right? Um, and then we see where does the problem come from? Does it come from the revenue side? Does it come from the cost side? And if it comes from the cost side, for example, then we dig deeper in order to further disaggregate what are the deeper down mathematical drivers. And this will then give us a clear understanding of what is the numerical problem driver. But this will not yet give us an understanding of why this problem driver has become problematic, right? So we now have an answer to the what, but not to the why, right? And the why will be answered in the second part of the diagnostic, which is then a qualitative analysis, where we can then essentially start asking qualitative how and why questions to understand what are the reasons, the underlying reasons, for the negative development of the problem driver.
And by the way, here is also how you will uh, then start asking a question such as, is this a company specific uh, observation or is this happening in the entire industry? Because uh, what you also see in the popular books is the suggestion to ask this question at the beginning, which is also a complete nonsense. Right? Um, well, but at the end of the day, once we found the reasons for the negative development of the problem driver that we have previously isolated, then we can proceed to the second overarching step and formulate concrete recommendations what we can do to either eliminate these reasons or alleviate their consequences. So, this is how you structure. This is how you think through strategic questions in a top-down way. And you grow brutally top-down. You explain the logic. You explain how you will invariably arrive at the answer to the client's question. Nothing else. You don't waste your time with speculation. You don't waste your time with shooting from the hip and formulating an initial hypothesis that is nothing but a wild guess. No, what you're showing is the sharp and precise process that will invariably lead you to the answer of the question. So, as usual, if you have any questions or uh, if you want help in yeah, mastering this skill and this way how real experienced top strategy consultants would structure strategic questions, then write it in the comments or directly reach out. Um, happy to, uh, um, yeah, happy to uh, elaborate further on that. So long for now. Have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers. Bye.